You know what I never really understood about Pokemon? Well, actually almost everything, but one of those things is traded evolutions. Like, how do they know when they've been traded? What if I was just like, Hey Brock, I gotta take a leak, hold my balls for me. And I come back and my team has more traded evolutions than an overpowered OU team. I mean, would they know if they were being properly traded? Meanwhile, in reality... To actually get traded evolutions meant that you would have to interact with, with others... Socially. Meanwhile, in the actual reality and not the time period of Gen 2, you don't have to interact. Who needs to interact when the internet can do that all for you? The closest thing to interaction in a Pokemon game nowadays is that little tagline everyone has in their profile. But at least they made these evolutions worth all of these trading shenanigans that you have to go through to get them. Well, most of them. Which is why I made this list. My top 10 traded evolutions. Number 10, Slowking. Trade Slowpoke while holding a King's Rock and this is what you get. Slowking, the royal Pokemon, the messiah, the unmerciful, the almighty king of the Slowpoke. Slowking is actually intelligent. Yeah, it's like some origin story for a comic book about a Slowpoke that gains superpowers from some Team Rocket experiments or something. I just like that they made a smart Slowpoke who is also king of the Slowpoke. To be honest, that's the only reason why it's on the list. That's why it's number 10. Every other evolution on this list is somewhat strong, but Slowking, it's aight, but it's definitely not the strongest. Wait, by God, I've just disrespected the king? Treason of the highest order. I could get banished to the other realm for this. Oh God, no! <laughs> Well, shit. Number 9, Dusk Noir, which evolves from Dusclops when traded with the Reaper Cloth. If you watched that top 10 Pokemon that would take over the world video I did, you'd know that it loses its ability to destroy everything because Dusclops is a black hole and is pretty much Ghost Kirby, but Dusk Noir is still a good evolution. Just look at that bulk and that attack and that... That speed? Okay, it's just bulky. It doesn't have speed, but do you think Dust Noir gives a damn? Hell no! Who needs speed when you're the Grim Reaper of all Pokemon? You may be able to outspeed it easily, but it doesn't matter because either way your soul belongs to it eventually. Its speed could even be a good thing. If the Smackdown was laid on your Dust Noir because it was outsped by your opponent, it doesn't matter because if you're feeling generous, you could unlay of some of that Smackdown and give them the gift of some of that pain. Oh, and Pain Split isn't the only move Dust Noir can use to feel a bit festive. I'd give this thing Pain Split with a bit of Toxic or Will O Wisp on the side and then a few moves that utilize its attack stat. It's got a lot of punches. You could choose from them, I guess. Number 8, Machamp. Trade Machoke and it becomes the champ. Well, it is the only Pokemon to have a championship belt, so I guess it is the champion of all the Pokemans. Okay, it's not the champion of all the Pokemans, but it's at least one of the manliest. It's pretty much the gym Pokemon, and it has four arms for that one guy out there that didn't notice. If it wanted to, we could deadlift while bench pressing. I have no idea how that would work out, but it probably could. It would find a way. Machamp will definitely lay the smack down on its enemies, and I don't just mean the move. Look at its Pokedex entries. It can throw 1,000 punches in two seconds. If that were a move, it would beat almost everything. It can't actually throw a 1,000 punches in the game, but at least you can pull off some no guard dynamic punch shenanigans. That'll piss some people off. Something that always bothered me though was the belt. I mean, it is the champ, so it deserves a title, I guess. But when Machop evolves into Machoke, is the belt just part of its anatomy, or is there just some random guy that goes up to you like, you evolved it? Oh, oh, good for you, good for, good for you. We, we got some kind of Pokemon master over here. Oh, here's your stupid belt, bitch. It's all about the attack with Machamp, and it doesn't go wasted with this move pool. So if you need a physical attacker with a wide variety of offensive moves and feel like trading for some reason, then my champ is a solid Pokemon. Mark Punch not included. <laughs> Number 7, 
Number 7, Kingdra. Trade Seedra with a dragon scale and it ascends to royalty as the king of the sea. Dras. <laughs> but more importantly, it becomes a dragon type. So that's cool. You know what else is cool about it? It can make whirlpools just from yawning. Yeah, yeah, remember that part in gold and silver? Yeah, that's Kingdra. Being a dick. A big old dick. It literally cock blocks you from getting to Lugia. But it's efficient with all rounded stats. Give it Dragon Dance and if you manage to set up, you'll have a bit of waterfall shenanigans to check your enemy straight into the Smackdown Hotel one after the other. And you've got yourself a decent physical sweeper. Number 6, Trevenant. The design for Trevenant is creative as hell. It's a goddamn ghost tree. If you Gen 1ers out there still argue that they're running out of ideas for designs, well then you shut your whore mouths, you goddamn hipsters. We got ourselves another king on this list, because Trevenants are pretty much kings of the goddamn forest. You got some forest curse action going on here. You ever see another Pokemon knowing how to forest curse? Nope. You didn't, because outside of this evolution line, nothing else knows it. Trust me, I'm no liar. You know what happens to liars. Trevenant delivers the Phantom Force straight up their candy ass. Yeah, yeah, it's an attack. Phantom Force. Don't try to tell me otherwise. Listen, listen, listen. I don't give a damn about your Power Ranger fan fiction. The creativity of this Pokemon makes it one of the better traded evolutions alone. What else could I say? Uh, uh... I'd like to see Brock try and molest this tree. <laughs> Number 5, Conkelder. Conkelder right here has always been compared to Machamp, but let me tell you something. Machamp may have the belt, but it's pretty clear which one of the two is the true champion. They have the same base stat, but Conkelda is stronger where it matters most. It's a hell of a lot bulkier than Machamp is, and it has the highest attack stat of all the fighting types. Unless you count Heracross in its mega form, if you wanna be a dick about it. Conkelda has lower speed, but then again, Machamp's speed isn't anything special. At least Conkelda can learn Mach Punch to kinda make up for it. Machamp has four fists, and so not one of them knows how to mock. It can throw a thousand punches in two seconds. It's THE Pokemon that can throw punches really fast, second to Hitmonchan. And it can't learn the one move that revolves around quickness and punching? It does get bullet punch, but the whole Mach Punch thing is still pretty stupid. Conkelda can learn Mach Punch, and he does it while holding these some bitches right here. And it can learn Drain Punch. That's like having Pain Split while getting to beat some ass. So Machamp is still solid, but it's just outmatched. So what's that now? Like Conkelda 8, Machamp 1? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Number 4, Alakazam. Our Gen 1, the best generation ever. Back when it was the only generation, Back when the special attack and defense were just one special stat. Back when ghosts couldn't do shit and bug types weren't offensive enough for them to matter. Yeah, yeah, that made Alakazam pretty OP back then. Back then, psychic types put the P into OP. But enough about the past. Even today, with divided special stats and buffed up weaknesses to the psychic type, it's still strong. I mean, even in its old age, it just became wiser. In terms of muscle, it's no Machamp. Actually, it's the complete opposite. But psychically, it's muscular as hell. And don't take it lightly just because it's well versed in the game of Knifey Spoony. These some bitches aren't just for vanilla hordes. Oh ho no. Bending these spoons could bend your cock so far up your ass you'll look like a xenomorph with its mouth open. Okay, that's good. It sums up Alexam enough. Just a very classy end to the segment. Number 3, Gengar. Remember Gen 1? There used to only be one set of ghost types, and to get that ghost type you had to trade. They were the only ones that could slap down the psychic types and put them back into line. Oh wait, they fucked that up in Gen 1 as well. Well, then Gen 2 came along and fixed all that shit with the dark types and making the ghost types way more useful. But nowadays, ghosts are some of the most useful and annoying types around. Gengar is no exception. Similar to many ghosts, it has a massive move pool. 
That's cool and all, if you're using it. But what makes Gengar deadly, other than having similar stats to Alakazam, is that having a move pool this varied can make it unpredictable. It could do anything. I mean, I guess you could assume that it's running the standard moves that most Gengars would, but you never really know. So he's a deadly motherfucker. Number 2, Scizor. Out of all the things I considered, designs, stats, uh, royalty, Scizor is one of the best traded evolutions. I liked Cypher and I spent many life savings away on that game corner being able to buy it for my team when I play through Kanto, but I always felt like it wasn't that good, which I don't really get why. I mean, they both have the same base stat. Cypher has better speed, but Scizor has better... Everything else. First up, Scissor is a steel and a bug type, so it only gets one weakness. Its attack and defense was buffed up, it has a mega evolution, and in the later games it gets better moves. So, Scissor 50, Cypher 3... 3... 2. This thing can run bullet punch to make up for its speed, it can have sword stance making its clamps extra meaty. It's a bug type, so if you want it can be a big FUCK! You to psychic types, and it's a steel type, so it could also be a big fuck you to fairy types as well. So, Scizor, it may not be a champion or a king, but it's versatile as hell and it looks cool. Number 1, Politoed. Okay, I've abused the whole king and royalty thing in this video enough, but Politoed is the king of all polys. Except the Polyrath, those guys are too busy with their own shit. Well, I guess it makes sense though, it does evolve when you give it the King's Rock, and apparently the curl on its head is what makes it a king. If it worked that way for humans, we might as well bow down to the almighty strong arm alchemist, Alex Luis Armstrong. This isn't another slow king deal, I didn't just put it on the list because of its status as a king. This king knows how to whip some ass! You send this thing in, and what does it do? Well, Politoed doesn't do shit, but it rains anyway with its drizzle ability. And it can use most water moves along with other cool and sometimes annoying stuff like Psychic, Brick Break, Substitute, Earthquake, and Toxic. Along with the whole rain thing, this thing is pretty damn powerful. Aside from strength, the design is good, and making this whole list made me realize how much I like king-based Pokemon. And I like this one the most. Like, Slow King's intelligent. He's well aware of his royalty. But look at Politoed. Just look at him. He doesn't give a shit about royalty. He just wants to go on with Politoed shenanigans, like... Like, clapping in the middle of battle and stuff. And that's why Politoed is my favorite traded evolution. He just doesn't give a damn. No, it's okay. Fairies will balance it out, see? Well, yeah, take that s <laughs> super fairy <laughs> attack, yeah. You know what's stupid? The fact that Reggie isn't in Smash Bros, but given one of the most overpowered Pokemon a Mega Evolution is pretty stupid as well. 